My name is John Mendez, and I am your host. Welcome to Walk to Wealth, where I motivate and inspire people new to the world of personal finance by letting you all in behind the scenes of someone who's still on his way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Walk to Wealth podcast. If you're tuning in on any of the podcast directories or YouTube, make sure you just do us one small favor and just refer us to a friend. If you have find any value from this podcast or anything, make sure you share it with someone so it can help them out too. Uh, I have a very special guest with me, uh, David Carlin. For anyone that may not know you, uh, tell us your elevator pitch. I don't really have a pitch, but you know, <laughs> but I do. Where I teach, you know. I teach business owners, entrepreneurs, and just everyday people how to make residual income off of credit cards. So if you're a business owner, I show you how to, low, you know, to lower your fees and take control of your credit card processing so you can instantly put money back in your pocket. If you're a person that wants to make money on this business, like we've been doing, my wife and I, for over two decades, I show you how to do it. So everyone accepts credit cards online and offline. Business owners, the same, didn't realize they could profit off of it. They just thought they had to get set up with it. They didn't realize they can also earn residual income off of credit cards. Yeah, and I'm super looking forward to this conversation because I've talked about credit cards, but I've talked more on like the points and miles side of things. Um, but David, before you got, you know, all these businesses up and running, uh, take us back to, you know, uh, your walk to wealth. How does it all start? Yeah, um, and to your one point, you're like the points and miles, right? I, I had someone yesterday that we're, we're now working with. They're you know, like, I knew there was money in this industry because why would the credit card companies be giving away all these points, all these rewards if there's not a lot of money to be made? Like, yeah. I'm like, there is, they just don't want, you know, they don't want you to know. Um, so um, I love the name of this walk to wealth, right? Because we're all led online that you could become a millionaire overnight. No, you can. <laughs> so lucky, what have you, right? But for the 99.9% .9 of the rest of us, it's a walk. But it's a slow one, you know, sometimes, right? And uh, it's funny, I, I was on a podcast the other day and in my own right, right? Because there's people way richer, more successful, better companies than myself, a lot of people. But I, I said on the podcast the other day, I so said, I've been a boss from day one. You know, that's just been my mentality from younger age. Uh, no matter what, I I was never looking for a job. I may have had one or two jobs as a kid, but then I owned my own companies from probably 15 or 16, maybe even younger, from an entertainment company to other companies. I'm not going to get into that, but um, uh, it's legal now, but I'm not going to get into that, um, to, you know, uh, a bike company that I owned for a very long time, DJ for a very long time, sold cars for a very long, long time. I kind of just dabbled in a million different things. Um, and when I met my wife um, at 26, 27, something around there, um, I owned a bike company at that time. We had our storefront. We had our online, offline, every different type of bike and very successful business. And she was in credit card processing, which she's been in now for 23 years. And after hearing about her business, I didn't marry her after hearing about her business, but I did end up, you know, we ended up getting married. Um, but, you know, I was thrown off because the same exact people question people ask me, and you're probably going to ask is like, you know, I don't understand. And like, how are you working from your phone? How are you making residual income off of credit cards? I don't under, where's your employees? Where's your, all? I don't have one. So after learning about her business, I was like, screw this overhead, screw these employees, screw every single day resetting. Not only am I going to marry you, <laughs> but it wasn't because of that. Um, you know, I'm going to get involved in this business with you. And as credit card processing evolves, that's what's been the most beautiful thing is I've been a part of all these different companies that I've started and other things that I've started. And this is the one thing that, you know, I'm married to her, so it's not mine because I'm only in this industry for about 10 years now, uh, coming up on 10, I guess. Um, our oldest account is about 16 years old. 16 years ago, Patricia had a conversation with a gentleman and a couple, and 16 years late, later, still to this day, from one action, we're getting paid residually every single month off that business, every single time they accept a card payment. Sheesh. That's yeah. almost as long as I've been <laughs> alive to date myself. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time. Now, before yeah. we get into the, the process, the one question that kind of just came up that uh popped up into while you were uh, you know talking about everything, how did you become or get into like that entrepreneurial mindset like so early on? I don't even know. I think you're born with it. You know what I mean? Like you're either born with it or you're surrounded around it. Um, my dad, um, 
didn't start companies, but he took over companies um, and he made them successful. He was a really, really hard worker, came from, you know, not, not you know, not really like a poor family, essentially. Um, and he's just a really smart guy. My mom was always hardworking. So I, I was instilled where it was a funny story is my family was like middle class ish, a little bit better. But I never knew my parents were actually, which now they are rich. I never knew they were actually successful my whole life because they never showed me anything. Like when I wanted Vans, I got like Dan's. Like when <laughs> I wanted like shoes, I had to go to Payless. Which like I, they never like, they gave me just enough, but they didn't like spoil me with anything. So I had to work with for what I wanted, right? And I just, man, if I saw, I don't know what it is, and some people may relate to this. If I saw, you know, 20 people getting money in some type of thing, I wouldn't go, oh my God, I want to be like those 20 people. I would go, where are they getting those products, those services, or where's their connect? And how can I be that plug for these 20 people? I'm not a follower. I'm a leader. Yeah. You're going to put me in a room with a thousand people, whether they're smarter, richer, different ethnicity, whatever. And you're going to, you're going to, when I walk in the room and I speak, I'm just going to command a different presence because I'm comfortable with myself. Right. It took a long time to get that way. But I've said this on a podcast before, a couple podcasts. There's nothing wrong when you have things that are wrong with you. What I mean by that is I'm very insecure. I'm still insecure to this day. Uh, but I let my I let my insecurities or things that may be negative about myself, I allow that to drive my success. Because I'm so insecure, I have to be over here. I have to be the person dancing on stage for everyone to go, oh, my God, Dave's better than us. It just is what it is. But most people don't want to say that, right? So instead of crying in the corner, I'm like, oh, I feel less than. I'm like, okay, I feel less than. So the only way I can feed that needed need of feeling more is by people seeing me as more. And the, why people see me as more is when I make more money and I'm more successful. I use that to drive myself. Yeah, that's amazing. And have you ever got caught up in yourself? Like, uh, cause I know one of these other guests that I had on, but like it could get caught up where like that external kind of validation kind of just like doesn't fuel you anymore, or, you know, gets you headed towards the wrong direction. Or did you ever come across a point in your life where, you know, you striving for that recognition kind of steered you the wrong way? I'm still not there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not like, I'm not like, I like. Most people are like, oh, yeah, like my mom, <laughs> I was telling my mom the other day, we were in New York, and I was like, you're going to see me on that billboard, and now I'm going to ring the NASDAQ bell. Like, that's why I'm still going, because I'm not done yet. Like, I want the whole, my dream would be the whole world is I'm helping people, but as much as I love helping people and as much as I love money, I would love for everyone in the world to know my name. I'm not going to stop until it happens. It probably never will happen, but that's what's going to drive me, right? Everyone has different reasons, but I think most people won't say what their reason is. They're like, nah, Dave, I... I don't want to be shallow or that sounds like, you know, you, you have to be humble. Like, why should I be humble and wait for someone to be like, Hey, if you made it, I may wait my whole entire life. So instead of waiting for someone else to tell you, you've done a good job or to get some kind of validation, you need to scream from the rooftops yourself. No one's going to promote you more than yourself and be real. Whatever you want. If you, if you're, if you're like, actually just like likes and comments, I love it. I live off it. Say it. I just don't care about money. I love making money, but I get a bigger high off of, I don't get a bigger high off of likes and comments. I live on online, but everyone's like, just like, I love making myself look better online, but that's not how I look. I love making myself. It makes me feel good when I lay across a car that I don't own, but I feel good online. No, like everyone's so fake and no one really says what really drives them because they're afraid of what people are going to think about them. It took me a long time to get to that point, to be able to say these kind of things online, but you know, like for recently, I bought a Rolls Royce, bought my dream car, bought the Rolls Royce Colony, right? I've been waiting forever to buy it. That's another thing is don't buy things immediately. Like wait for it and then you'll really appreciate it. You bet your ass. I love every single person that looks and goes, who the hell's in that car? I love it. Nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Like it's just that most people just won't say that. Fuck right out. I love it. Love it every single day. Yeah, that's another thing too is that um, you touched on it. It's like you may never accomplish it in your life. And if you can't accomplish it in your life, you're not thinking big enough. You're limiting yourself. You you should yeah. be per intentionally pursuing something that you know you probably could never, ever do. And just strive for it every day like it's, it's possible. Because it's probably not. But it, the, it's the, the act of pursuing and having the the willingness, the courage, and I guess the balls, for a better way to put it, to get up here and say that and go after it. 
it's like it's not too many and it's like a lot of people will criticize you for chasing more when they're too scared to chase you know what's meant for them it's like if you don't take what grab take what's yours it's like someone's out there you know hungry and they'll run up yours and theirs and everyone else's yeah it's you know unfortunately you know I, we we also train people online this business and you know we started doing that about two years ago and before i've never i didn't have to be online right and i have tried to help so many people with their mindset, with this, with motivation, with more, more, more. A lot of people like to accumulate things, right? Why do we buy programs or SaaS products? Because we think it's going to automate our lives. But we buy nine out of 10 things we buy. We don't even really use the full potential of what we buy. People like to accumulate things. No one likes to put in work. And everyone likes to sit online thinking that they can sit back and become a millionaire because they saw one person do it online. Um, And, you know, it's just... It's hard to teach. It's something that you need to be around. Like I have my wife as my partner, right? Like you need to be around. I don't need, mean you need to pay for people's masterminds. You don't need to you need to pay for coaching. And I honestly, back in the day, was like, Dude, that's such a crock of whatever, right? Like, but the right people being around, I would say, if there's a business you want to be in, if it's owning a pizza store, or this, whatever, I'm not talking about a coach, but I'm talking about like, you're like, hey, man, I'll give you five grand. Let me just follow you for a year, whatever. Like, that's the thing. Like, being around other people, that's the only way you're going to ever get your mindset up. Because if you don't have the right mindset to keep going every single day, to persevere when times are hard, you're just going to jump from one thing to another, one thing to another. Four years later, you tried 40 different businesses, and you're like, all those guys and all those companies were screwing me. And it's like, well, what was the one variable that, that was in common with every single one of those? It was you. Right. Like maybe one of their two of those things were bad or maybe they weren't a fit, but you got to find what drives you. You got to find what you like. And sometimes you have to be real with yourself. If like, damn, you know, I didn't, I don't have much money. I don't have much time. I got kids. I got this. I'm not as smart. Okay. So that I can't fix that. But what do I have? Well, you have what most people have. You cannot work people. Right. But if you're like, but damn, I'm also, I don't have that motivation. We got to find someone and surround yourself with someone who does, because you know that you aren't going to do it on your own. And that's just, you know, just sometimes you have to look in the mirror and be like, when's enough enough? And it's kind of like what people on like what drugs or whatever, like it's whenever you hit your rock bottom in business that you're like, all right, fine. You know, I have to fix this and life is short. So you got to do what makes you happy and what, whatever goals you have. And if your goal is just, I don't know, I want to make 10 grand a month and that's it. Cool. But if your goal was to make 10 grand a month and then you're bitching because you're living in LA and you can't afford it, why are you in that city? Yeah. You had a choice. You made that choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, or you're bitching because you don't have money. You bought a car you couldn't afford. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's a million different factors to success outside of working hard. Yeah. And so since we're on a topic of money, is I think it's a good time to make a little bit of a pivot. Um, let's talk about this credit card payment stuff. As I said, I'm big into points and miles and I use credit cards all the time. So if I could find more ways to benefit on top of the points and miles I'm already getting, uh, I'm, I'm all ears. So, you know, what exactly is that industry? How does it work? I know, like, I see sometimes when I go to like, grocery stores, like small, like smaller mom and pop shops, it'll be like, we don't accept Amexes. And I know it's because like they'll charge the, a transaction or, piece. Yeah, or something like that. I don't know how it works. So, you know, for anyone that is clueless like me a little bit, uh, can you explain to us, you know, what it actually is and how it works? I've never, by the way, I've never been interviewed by one single person that's ever like, I understand your business. Nobody, does. <laughs> even the, even people who are crushing it are like, damn, I left a lot of money on the table <laughs> this yeah. last decade. But, you know, or like, damn, I've been sending everyone to Stripe and I'm making money. I'm like, yeah, well, at least you know now. So very simply, um, I like I said, when I met Patricia, I was like, whoa, right? And then five years ago, we taught, we were teaching people offline this business, right? Who've never been in this industry before. And then two years ago, we built the world's first and largest training platform called Residual Payments, where we teach people and business owners how to make residual income on credit cards. Very simply, um, let's use business owners first. You're a business owner. Online off, I don't care. You're, you just whatever, however you take card payments, you probably went through somebody or some company like Square, Stripe, PayPal, whatever, to set up your credit card processing. 
So there's the hard cost on credit card processing from Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, the card issuing that, you know, let's say you go to Chase and the issue of whatever, a Visa card or what have you, mm-hmm. they, that they get their take, what they want, okay? Um, but then that person or Stripe, Square, PayPal, et cetera, names you just know, I'm just saying those names, they're marking it up. So you may be paying 3% to process credit cards. So just accept credit card payments, but the hard cost might be 2%. So let's say you do $100,000 a month in sales. You may be burning $1,000 a month just to accept cards. Well, you could put 12 grand back in your pocket Mm. every single year. So that's for a business owner. So if you're a business owner, join our program. We literally only charge people a dollar to join our program. Um, because we, we know that business owners are going to join, switch their merchant account. Um, and then if you, we know that, Hey, if you know people, we do have a done with you service where if you have people, you know, we'll join you on every call, do everything. And for a full entire year, we'll essentially be your automated payments company that you just send them. We do everything else for you. And you make 50, 50 of every single, every single person you bring. So if you're a person out there and you're like, yeah, um, you need a couple of things. You need, you need not, you do not be afraid of sales. You need to be an entrepreneur. You need to be a business owner or you got to have a drive. Uh, I can't work with it if, if, you, if you're not, cause it's, I can't fix lazy. So if you're like, yeah, Dave, my own business, um, I know business owners or I live in a town. I get my hair cut here. Everybody knows a business owner. You can go out and save your clients or your friends money. And then you can also make up the difference. You can make anywhere from 0.1 to 2% on processing volume. So you can make on $100,000 a month. If someone has $100,000 a month in sales, you can make anywhere from random example, 100 bucks to $2,000 a month on that account. So if you go to your friend's barber shop, let's say it's a big one, they do 100 grand a month, you can potentially eliminate all their fees, you can lower their fees, and then you could potentially make anywhere from 100 bucks to $2,000 on 100,000 by setting them up once. And then you get paid every single month off of every single card transaction at that business so as an outsider of a business you can do it as a business owner you can cut out that middle person which we show you and put that money back in your pocket and that's dope to know because i literally at the time of this recording i had my first paid class so i'm a realtor and i'm also if you know anything about realtors i'm like a third of the average age of most realtors and so one thing i kind of grew up with is social media so i taught my first social media class and i used eventbrite and i noticed on Eventbrite, there's like a service fee. And then on top of that, like a credit card fee. There's like Eventbrite has its fee and the credit card has its fee. So it's like two fees that the people have to pay. So like you're yep. saying, essentially, I could just get rid of like Eventbrite essentially. And let's say I charge, I don't know, let's say 10 bucks. I could they just pay 10 bucks or something like that. How does that work? So it, So you're still, you're going to be... Let's just use a hundred dollar transaction. Yeah. Um, for example, let's say Eventbrite, it's costing you three percent yeah. with Eventbrite, right? So one hundred bucks is what three dollars, right? Yeah. This is a very small, 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 small example. What if it could go down to, you know, let's say you cut out the middle person, and the hard cost was actually two percent, and you've been char- and you've been getting your your cost has been three percent. Well, there's one percent that is being marked up. We can eliminate fifty percent of that. So then 50% of that markup can go back in your pocket. So that's where it works for you is, yeah, 1,000% on your own business. You can just set up. This is an example. Essentially how I equate it to is imagine as a realtor, um, you got to resell the same home every single month for years to come. The same home. You just keep reselling. Like you don't sell a home to somebody once and then you get paid off it every single month. That Mm -hmm. would be weird. Right. So imagine being able to cut out the realtor entirely and then cut out them getting paid every single month. So now you're becoming the realtor on your own business. Mm. But every single month. That's the difference. Okay. And so with this credit card payment stuff, um, how would it then work for you said so for like an entrepreneur? they would have to go into other businesses and pretty much like pitch them essentially to convert, to like make the switch to correct online, online or offline. We show you every which way on how to build your brand, build partnerships and close deals online and offline. 
every single person on our team along with ourselves. By the way, we're actively in this industry every single day. We're not just teaching people. We, yeah. we do this every single day. Every single person who's going to be helping you is actively in this industry and showing you what's working. Um, so, yes, online or offline, depending on what your skills are, networking, partnerships, brand building, um, social media, we show you every which way to land an account. Because think of it this way. What if you landed small scale? Let's say you landed one account. You, you got somebody to switch over and you're making 500 bucks a month off it. Like, and then you did nothing else with it. That's the beauty of this business. There's no licensing, like being a realtor. There, you can move from state to state and you can go after accounts in any state. Mm. So for you, let's say you make 500 bucks a month off of one account. And you're like, that's all I actually wanted. I've never heard anyone say that, but yeah. you know, they're like, that's all I wanted. I wanted to get rid of my car bill, and my, my cell phone bill, and this bill. That bill's gone now. Um, and you're like, I'm going to go travel the world and go surfing for two years. As long as your merchant's processing that you set up, you'll get paid. You don't have to service them or do anything. Mm, okay. That's the beauty of this business. So you can go whenever Remote you hit the number much. you want to hit, you can, and you could be anywhere in the world too while you're doing this. Okay. And so what are a couple of tips? So anyone that kind of are interested and so that they don't walk into a business owner's, you know, spot and look like an idiot. What are a couple of tips you can give to the people that are, you know, interested in taking that first step and want to learn how to pitch or anything like to an actual business? I would say don't. You need to join residual payments first because you are going to sound like an idiot. You're not going to know what the hell you're talking about. Right? So residual payments is our training program. And what happens is if they work with us, they're not doing that. We're doing that with them. So I think of think our model is like, think of like buying a franchise, which is not. You're buying a proven business model that works. And then we're actually coming and working your franchise with you. We're going to be there next to you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Right? So imagine I'm thinking about getting into real estate and I get to shadow you or someone from your team and learn everything. The, the After training so many people, thousands of people, how people learn is some people are different, but most people learn by being there and just hearing and then taking little pieces, little pieces, little pieces. That's what we do outside of our video recording trainings, our live trainings, et cetera. There's nothing better than actually having someone there by your step or your side when you're actually trying to close that business. So essentially all they need to do is after they learn everything is what hardware and software are they using? Is it a terminal? Is it a point of sale? Are they selling online? Are they, are they sending invoices? What's the name of it? They all they need to get is one month's processing statement. So the hardware and software, one month's processing statement, and then we join them on a call with their client um, to, to see if it's a fit for them. Like literally that's it. Like, what are you using? Oh, he's on, he's, on, he's using ClickFunnels and he uses authorized.net as a gateway. Okay, get one month processing statement. We'll have our team analyze it. We'll put together what we call a cost savings to show you were here. Here's where you're going to be. Here's how much you're going to save. Here's how much you're going to earn. We'll jump on a call and then hopefully win over the business. Literally, that's it. It's literally that simple. Okay. And so for, you know, the Stripes, PayPal and things like that. So essentially you guys have like your own Stripe essentially that you guys use. How did you right. guys come about creating that? Was that always something that, you know, your wife had when in her business or that you guys just implemented into what you guys are doing now? Or is like, do you guys create that from the ground up? Yep. So we have our payments companies outside of our training company. We also own a CRM company. Uh, we also uh, other we own a m multiple different companies. Um, so yeah, that's something that that's where we thrive. Right? We're 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 business people, right? I'm not a coach. I'm not any of that stuff. You know, our team helps people. I'm straight building companies with my wife, making residual income, and we know credit card processing. That is our sweet spot. That's everything we know. So yes, we have all of our payments companies that compete with the Stripe, PayPal, Squares of the world. Um, to win over those accounts. Okay. And how on earth do you have time for all of this? It seems like you have a lot going on between the two of you guys. How do you manage all this and you're on this interview? 16 hour days, seven days a week. Um, yeah, it's, that's it. You know, just trying to, we have a big team, um, obviously. Um, but it's a lot with all the different companies. Uh, some days, you know, I look in the mirror, I go, why am I still working? Because we could retire tomorrow and be done. But I'm just not, like I said in the beginning, I'm just not done. I'm just getting started, right? So um, it's a lot. It's a lot for a lot of people. It's a lot, too, if you, um, if you have a partner. You know, you have to know, the biggest thing you have to know 
is you're going to fight for sure, maybe daily. It's how quickly can you put out those fights so we can have a, a train moving forward? How do you, everyone who works for us as well works remotely around the world. Um, everyone who works for us works seven days a week, uh, but no one has any hours and no one's watching anything. Because there's always work to get done, and we're in by giving everyone that flexibility, it enables that we've never had to fire anybody um, who's ever worked for us. So, delegating is one thing. Um, that's where I always tell everybody: once you get any certain amount of money, if you have it, start hiring people for things you're just not good at. Like if you're good at making clothes, you don't know how to build websites or do in social media or podcasting or anything. Don't try to figure that out and run your business because then you're actually going to you're actually going to start to you know to be pissed off at the business you created, losing the love of the product or service you created because you're now doing things that you're just not good at or you don't like doing. If you don't have the money to hire people in the beginning, stop being greedy in the beginning and be like, well, this is going to be a billion dollar idea. I don't want to give away any parts of my company. Your, your company's worth nothing right now. You don't have any clients. You're not making any money. If you can find someone who, who also has time like you and skilled in building websites and marketing and social media and other things, bring them in, split up the company, give them phantom stock, give them sweat equity, whatever you want, bring in other people so your company can scale faster because you have to know how to delegate tasks. If you try to do everything out yourself, if you have a good idea, you're gonna go too slow to market and you're gonna get run over. Or as we know, most people don't have the mental capacity to keep on going. That's where the best athletes in the world is just like the best business people. They just keep going, keep going. So if you're one of those type of people that like, if it doesn't work in three or six months, you know, you're going to get sidetracked. Well, how, how many people, if you know, if you had more people, you get to market faster, you kind of have to have that realization with yourself of giving up some control. And a lot of people don't want to give up control as well because they're afraid of other people ruining their company, but they're ruining their company by not giving up control. Yeah, now that actually just answered the next question I was going to have, because especially a lot of people are starting off, because most of the people, at least that are listening, it's like first time, you know, you know, first generation entrepreneur, first generation business owner. So it's like it, it comes with a lot of pride in starting a business because you're taking a step that no one before you've taken. And with that comes a lot of pride. You're doing something different. And a lot of those people, because that pride gets in the way, are kind of blinded in a way by the fact that they're actually shooting themselves in the foot over and over again. And they're wondering why they're not succeeding in business, and which then trickles into all the area, other areas of life. And as you said, if you have a partner, you know, God forbid you guys aren't both shooting yourselves in the foot, because then that's going to lead to fights, which is going to lead to everything dissolving, and which then leads to everything else dissolving. Because once you start spiraling downwards, it's it only goes down from there until you stop it and pick it back up. So I want to ask. Yeah, he- Sorry, go on. No, I was going to ask you too. So um, at any point in time, like how soon did you realize that? You I mean, you've always been an entrepreneur, but how soon did you realize like, hey, I got to, you know, I got to get someone. I can't do this all by myself. I mean, it's still to this day. I'm finding out new things about myself. Um, I, uh, it's funny. I said the other day to, for who I said it to, um, I'm really, 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 really good at sales. Probably the worst in the world of profit. And what I mean by that is I'm really good at creating things. I'm really good at selling different products and, and, and just creating the whole sales process and the marketing in terms of numbers and stuff like that. I mean, we make money. So I just feel like, oh, the, I, I, I equate making money to go, I just keep seeing my bank accounts go up. Like mm. if you ask me, Dave, what's your overhead? No idea. Dave, how much do you spend a day in marketing? I have no idea. Dave, how much is this? I have no idea. Like some people like, so that's something that, at what, 38 years old, if I'm not good at it now, probably not going to ever be good at it. So I needed to hire the right people that that's their, their thing. Because there's some things where I'm like, it's killing it. And they're like, no, it's not, Dave. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, you, know, it's, you know, so everyone touts online um, how much sales they do. No one touts about how much profit they make. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, become a seven-figure earner. You know, how about say become a seven figure earner spending seven figures on marketing? So zero dollars, you know, like everyone, like, like everyone to your exact point in the beginning, proud that they're business owners. Oh, I'm proud. I started this. Hey, you got your company incorporated. And, and sorry, I'm still here. A second, but I have a good thing for you. So, you know, everyone, 
everyone wants to get their companies incorporated, which they're not doing. Somebody else is doing for them. And I could go, we got a thousand companies incorporated tomorrow. That's the easiest thing, right? They're, I'm proud of being a business owner. Okay. Are you ever, you know, shouting about the rooftops of being proud about how hard you work? Are you, are you shouting from the rooftops about how smart you work? And are you shouting from the rooftops how much profitability your company is making? Those are three things you don't hear about. Yeah. You just don't hear about them, right? And that's where, you know, for a lot of people, you know, it's, it's, it's so many people are business owners, you know, and, but not many people are actually wildly successful in their business. If you pull back the books and then I get to see it. The reason why I say it and I can say it is from credit card processing, I see people's bank accounts. I see their processing volume. And I want to let everyone know on this call that, you know, you used to back in the day have to compete with a few people around town before social media, probably before even you, where there was a couple of people and you didn't know everyone else in the world who was killing it. Now you have five, 10 million people online that look like you, sound like you in the same industry, and you're like, damn, I'm a loser. I will tell you that 99.9% .9 of those people you think are having a better life than you, they aren't. They're just better at social media than you make it look like. Yeah, it's really a game of, of appearance when it comes to social media, and most people can't tell the difference. One thing I remember from my entrepreneurship class um, back in, in, in high school was we used to watch Shark Tank every Friday. And one of the things like all the, you know, the sharks would ask is like, you know, what are, what are your profit margins? And they always want to know like, yeah, you know, I did X, Y, Z, but it's like, okay, what are you left with at the end of the day? I just having this conversation with my dad. I came back from the airport last night. He does, he has his own landscaping business and with landscaping, there's a lot of expenses because you got to pay for material and things like that. And, and there's a lot. And I think he's running at like, I think 40, it's, three forty five ish percent profit margin. I'm not too sure if that's good for a landscaping business because they do have to pay for a lot. Um that's good. And that's pretty good. But yeah, so he's he's making pretty, you know, decent taking home pretty decent money. But I was just as, as, like asking him like, you know, what are ways that you could become more efficient so you're not overspending or not keeping up because he just recently got a credit card. He used to do everything cash. And as you know with cash, it's hard to keep up with yeah. everything. So you can tell your dad this and instantly put probably 3% back in your dad's pocket. Yeah. His, his dad, my dad, um, no, he got a card in terms of like, he has, but I don't know. He has like the Amex gold business card, but so it's like, he uses that for his business expenses now, but he used to use cash and try to bookkeep everything on his own. Well, he has not a, a tax prepare, but like still with cash, it's like a hundred dollars goes missing, you know, there goes towards one thing. It's like, you could probably be making so much more money if you just kept up with all your stuff better. Um, one thing you need to freaking tell your dad right when you're done today for if he doesn't accept credit cards, he needs to because he can set up his clients on recurring and he's not chasing them for payments. And your dad can qualify for a program as well where he can set himself up um, with a program called Cash Discount where he can eliminate all of his fees. So he can actually accept credit cards like cash and he can pay zero. So you can, for your dad, automate his business better and put more money back in his pocket. So literally you, you need like, literally I couldn't tell you how many landscapers we have on our books of business. So you can literally put 3% back in your dad's bottom line. Um, I will say this there, twofold. There, there's a right and a wrong to this story. Um, I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs that, and you see it every single day that double down, double down, double down, double. They just always double down. It's never enough, and then eventually it catches up with them. It's kind of like at a casino, right? You yeah. just keep, let's say you win and just keep stacking and stacking it. Yeah, that 1% of people will, oh, my God. But my dad taught me as a young kid, uh, if you don't have cash to be able to buy it in full, you can't afford it. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I don't, you know, it's kind of like when I said in the beginning, like the Rolls Royce colon, and, like, I could have bought that 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, no problem. Um, even probably longer than that, honestly. But um, I just did it. I just kind of waited, right? So in other things, like you don't want to be cheap. You know what I mean? When it comes to business, you don't want to like hold yourself back. But you also have to make strategic, you know, moves. So sometimes, yes, you can get money cheaper. Um, but at the same time, you know, people can put themselves in bad situations taking out loans or getting big credit lines too. Like let's say he went out and got 50 grand or something. And I mean, his business didn't stop, but let's just say it did, like when the world shut down and he's got that 50 grand credit and boom, sales go to zero. Like shit, 
You know what I mean? It's like, and you know, your dad obviously would be smarter than the rest of the people, but you have, you see a lot of people that use cards or funding to live a lifestyle or to try to portray something different for their business. Cause they think it's going to change their lives. I will tell you mm -hmm. biggest thing you can do for your business is micro marketing or micro moves. And what I mean by that, and no offense to you, yeah. I, I've said this, the biggest guys in the world is me being on this podcast isn't going to change my life. Me being on 10,000 of these will change my life. And that's where people think like well, this, this person is going to cost a hundred grand. So I got in the bank account, but I think this one thing is going to do it. You're rolling the dice. And I can tell yeah. you that in the day and age of social media and everything, like it will, it's up and gone. Why do you keep doing new episodes? Because people's retention, it's got, got to keep feeding the algorithm. Right. So um, if it was, if you could get a better piece of hardware that can make, let's say it takes him two hours to cut a lawn, but it, he's going in debt because this new piece of thing, it's going to cut his time by 50%. By cutting his time by 50%, it's going to do this. You fully mapped it out 1000%. But I don't believe in people putting themselves in debt regardless. Yeah, definitely. And then um, I like what you mentioned about, you know, people's attention span and social media and everything, because nowadays people are, you know, you, the people that you're competing with, I mean, you never knew who you're competing with, but now since that competition pool has expanded, people might not be even in your, in your market, but are taking your market share because they have such a strong social media presence that even though they might not serve that market, because when people think of whether, let's say real estate, because they think, you know, of X person for real estate, they could be, you know, a realtor in Cali. They'll probably go to them first before they come to me because I didn't, I wasn't as consistent, which is part of the reason why I came onto Riverside for the podcast because I don't have a team yet to do all the, you know, clips and sort of stuff. But with this podcast platform, I could make from one episode 30 to 40 clips and just put it in a vertical format with literally two clicks of a button. And then now I could upload that at high content. I mean, in high volumes without having to have a team quite yet and just ramp it out. Because as you said, you know, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And if you're not on top of mind with social media, you're, as you said, you're rolling the dice. People will forget about you. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to ramp up, keep it going. And while the snowball is rolling, just keep on running with it until it, you know, eventually stabilizes it out a little bit. Because, like, the snowball needs a little bit of push. The avalanche will just take over everything, but I'm not at the avalanche stage yet. So I have to, you know, push it a little bit, keep on pushing it consistently and keep on going so that it can grow and get to that point where it's like, all right, it's, it's rolling. All right, focus on the next thing and run with that. Yeah, and you're being smart about it. Well, I like what you're doing and what people need to take from that is I didn't mean day one, like bringing people in. You can but what I really mean is like, I love that you're learning all these things because eventually when you get to a point and you are going to hire people for certain sections in your company, you need to know how every section operates so that if God forbid you have to let them go, you can't be held hostage because they know you don't know how to do it. And without them, you're screwed. Mm. Especially, which I always tell everybody is everyone's, you know, are you prepared if, you're, if your business actually works? Are you prepared if you go viral overnight and, oh, my God, 5,000 people roll into my system or buy my product? And, uh, what am I going to do type of thing, right? And once you start really rolling, if you hire someone for a certain job, for example, like you're saying, maybe splicing up and taking all the podcast stuff, and you've never done it and you have no idea how to do it, and now you, you're at where it has to be done, you don't even know who to hire or what to tell them their job needs to be because you don't even know how that job is done that person's going to know and it's going to bring your business down. So I honestly love um, that when we start even our, some of our bigger companies, I'd be on, it would be funny. I'd be on support lines. I'd be on here. People wouldn't know it's me, but I would just be listening and seeing everything. So I can always train the next person, train the next person who's trained these people and just knowing how your whole, your whole business operates. And I was listening to this one young girl, I forget uh, what her name is. Um, and she was at a, uh, it was a thing for um, some type of doctor, oh, plastic surgeons. And she was riding a, a elevator down with a couple of plastic surgeons. And these were like the top guys in the world, like the smartest and the best. And they were long, I'm definitely butchering this, but they were talking about, you know, how this one guy is booked up like two years in advance. That one guy who's booked up isn't the best. 
you just got a million followers on social media. They're way better. They're way better than that person, but he knew how to use the tool of social media. A uh, perfect example, Trisha and myself are probably more well-known than you, if I asked you who's the CEO of PayPal or Square, you wouldn't know, but more people would know our name than they know than they know them, right? And they'll, if, if I was put in a room with a thousand people in the payments industry um, that make the same amount of money as us or below or above or what have you, I guarantee 99.9% .9 of those people in that room know more about payments than myself. It's probably always gonna be a fact. But the thing I know is how to get people to know, like, and trust me sooner. If somebody is more of an expert in something, but they don't know how to get through to people, don't know how to market online or offline, or don't know how to work on their people skills for people to know, like, or trust them sooner, I'm gonna to get to market faster because I'm willing to outwork you and willing to outsmart you in terms of people liking me better. So if you know more, but no one ever gives you a shot to hear what you have to say, what is all that knowledge that you've learned matter? It doesn't matter. And you should know that in real estate where selling a home, it's not about, it's about knowing that they know, like, and trust you to let you sell their home. That's where it comes down to. Yeah. You need to come from curiosity. A lot of people come in, whether it's, you know, real estate or any type of sales, it's like, Hey, here's what I do. Here's why I'm the best. And it's like, I could care less about what anything you have to say, which is kind of why every time you know, without fail, before I interview someone, I always ask, tell me about your walk to wealth. Because if you, if I feel like personally, without that, anything that comes afterwards is meaningless to whoever listening to it. It's just going to go right over their heads. So and it's like, at that point, if it goes over their head, then what was the point of the interview? So I always try to get that, you know, that likability scale up before I get into the, you know, nuts and bolts of every conversation, because it hopes that, that there's someone out there in their journey that resonates with what that's saying. And then whatever you say after that, there's going to be so much more receptive first because you made that connection. You went the extra mile to be personable. And a lot of people just like, hey, I'm the best. Choose me. Choose me. And it's very egotistical, very selfish. And in all reality, you're probably not even really helping that person, even if you can sell their home for the most money. Because what if they needed time to move? You sold their home in two weeks, but they still needed to find a place. Now, you know, the home's closing in 30 days. They don't have nowhere to go and they still got to get kicked out because they accepted an offer. So it's like, or whether it, that could be in another industry as well. People don't take yeah. enough time to like figure out people's wants, needs, desires, and their goals and see if what they can offer aligns with that. I'm constantly learning every single day. Um, and that's where we need to learn. I'll show you. We've got this one. You know, there's three books here that I don't like to read. I just started reading because I knew I had to. But I'm constantly <laughs> learning. I've literally never read a full book. I'm still doing it. I have one I just started to read on managing people. Another one on fuck being humble. Another one on mental toughness. None of these have anything to do with payments, right? Because the more I can get into people's brains and the more I can understand myself, the more sales I'll close. And I have this one guy that uh, we're working with and it's something I never even knew about. You learn and um, other people would be like, I knew about it, Dave, but I didn't, um, was high level and low level conversations. And when you go to, I can do this for you, I can sell your home this way, and I got this, and by you, and, and I, 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 and we, you know, we, we, that's saying that you're the hero. They don't want you to be the hero. They want to be the hero, right? So you could sell your home with me, and by you selling your home with me, you're going to be able to leverage this, and then you're going to be able to sell it faster, and then you're going to get more money back in your pocket, and then you are going to be able to move to your new home and be happy with your family. They want to be the hero, right? They want to be where they're, they're the smarter one leveraging your services. It's, it's, I've been in this industry for 10 years, and I know I'm an expert in this, and I, who cares? Like, who, I don't care. I want you to make me feel better about myself. And then I'm the smart person that chose you because you made me know, like, and trust you. Mm -hmm. Right? And I always tell everybody else, here's the thing you can use. Well, I'm brand new, Dave. What do I do? People are going to, it's the best thing in the world. 1,000%, um, you know, uh, you, I, I am brand new. But let me tell what you're going to access and why it's going to be an advantage to you by you giving me a shot. By you giving me a shot, 
I'm probably going to call you more than you're going to call me. I'm going to service the crap out of you. That's what you're going, you are going to be able to leverage myself 24 seven because you're going to be my only client. It is my main goal to get my business off the ground by servicing the crap out of you and making sure that you are happy and you get the best level of service and pricing for your house in the fastest amount of time. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to going with somebody who may be in 10 years longer in this industry, they're probably have a hundred clients you will be my only clients and you will be able to leverage that by anything you need. I will be there for you. Yeah. There's always a way to twist the negative into a positive. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, like about 30 minutes before we started interviewing, I was on Instagram, um, just doing outreach. Like I'm trying to grow my podcast. So I'm organically commenting on people's pages. And there's one page that I follow specifically. And he was literally saying that when you're brand new, so many people fail because they think of how can I get my first transaction? How can I get my first sale? Instead of thinking, how can I help this person in front of me? And they're so stuck in that transactional way of thinking about going about things that they never, ever realize that it's always service first. Unless you're in a product-based industry and you just literally have, you know, the best product and, you know, marketing to back it. But like in ser anything that's service related, but it's people are an important factor, you know, it's, you have to, you know, get, build that connection and, come from curiosity and I, I love the books that you're reading i haven't read them yet but just based off the titles it's like i always had this little thing in me where like i just liked learning how people ticked and although i wasn't a natural born entrepreneur i was not born with it at all but i feel like i have natural born skills that were easily applicable into entrepreneurship so once i had like my little personal finance epiphany it was extremely easy to transition because I had built all these other things in other areas that had nothing to do with business or money. And so once I just switched that to money, it was easy to pick up and run because I spent so much th time thinking about psychology and like human development and like family studies, studies and mindset and how, you know, why people do this at this age and stuff like that. All those things really just sparked curiosity in me. And then bringing that into conversations on a daily basis with other people, it was like, oh, there's something about that guy. I like him. And then they probably don't remember anything that you have to say afterwards because you probably said what the, all the other people said but about, you know, what you actually provide. But because they resonated with you so much, they're going to call you. And if it's not that day, it might be the next day or the next week, but they're going to find a way back to you because you took that extra mile to make that connection. I love what you said, you know, you enjoy it seems like whatever you're learning you like right so many people need to really hear that you were interested in this you did this people follow things online because so they read something like oh my i'm supposed to post at 6 a.m i'm supposed to do it this time to shoot this type of video and they hate it you hate something a perfect example our team started a podcast for us we did three and i was in the beginning i, was like, I don't want to have my own podcast I'm like i just want to be interviewed i don't die and i love being interviewed i don't like running a podcast so i stopped i'm like i'm good i don't want to do this like like don't do things that you don't like because you think it's going to get you results, right? Like if you don't like some aspect of it, if you don't like everything about whatever it is, then don't do it. But if you like some aspects, find what you like. Like I'm interested in just people. I'm interested in leveling myself up. Um, and you have to be happy with where you're at. Don't try to learn things that you don't like because then you're just going to resent the process if it doesn't work, right? You're like, I freaking wasted, you know, be smart guy. I listen to Gary V. And I did it this way. I did it for five years and I did not build my company. I wasted so much of my life. It's like, yeah, because it shined through that you hated shooting videos. Like, or maybe it's just not for you. Like, yeah, I always saw everybody. If you love the business you're building and then it becomes successful, you won twice. Mm -hmm. But if you enjoy making content, enjoy making it for whatever reason and then put it out there. And then you don't care because you enjoyed the process yeah of it and then if you get likes and comments and deals from it even better but i think people should walk to wealth when it comes to social media and messaging what i mean by that is take your time look at their stuff and send a personal message every single idiot young guy that's pretty much who sends it sends me you look like an entrepreneur like me would you like to get six figures i'm like have you not looked up me have you not <laughs> researched like like Maybe a day? Are you talking a day? Because, yeah, teach me. I'd love to see your bank account. I almost want to be like an asshole. I'm like, you show me yours if I'll show you mine. I'll let you pick one of my seven bank accounts. Yeah. If one of yours is larger than mine, I'll hear you out. Yeah.
like, I don't want to be an asshole like that, but it's like these guys online are like just hitting up a thousand people a day with the most BS, like worst pitches where I'm like, find 10 people a day. Say, Hey man, um, I really, you know, I admire the business you built. I know you are probably really busy. Um, but I think it could benefit you by leveraging getting on my podcast. I know you've probably been featured on ones where you've gotten a thousand clients, but you know, if you could get on mine, you could potentially get one, two, five clients by getting on there. Either way, I admire what you built. I look forward to hearing back from you. I just want to let you know you have a fan. What do people like? People love when you build them up and you say nice things. Like imagine like with a, like when you see those YouTube videos, be like, hey, you look really pretty today. You open someone's door, you say things. What does it do? It automatically makes disarm someone. They smile and they're like, oh, and then what can I give back to you? Give first, mm. do something for them and expect nothing in return, right? And that's how you're going to get to your long-standing relationships. I've made some of my biggest money from Instagram from making connections with people, but that was walking the wealth with slower messages and really taking my time to try to find the right people instead of just like mass messaging people and not looking anything up about them. Yeah, definitely. I feel like a lot of those people, and it's funny, I was literally at his, uh, Keller Williams had a convention that I just came back from yesterday at the time of this recording. And there's a lady who came early to like the main convention room and like all the seats are lined up. She literally went around and just put business cards on every seat before anyone showed up. So when we came in, at the, we thought the seats were being held for other people because usually, you know, you come in groups. No, she just literally put business cards. Like no, no effort to make any connection. Just ran out, put business cards on all the seats. And it's like, Stupid. Th that's the worst type of networking ever. No one is, is going to either get sat on or it's going to get put to the other seat next to it. Or she's going to get, you know, completely thrown away. It's like people don't make any extra effort to actually personalize that message and build a, you know, a, you know, a massive connection versus just trying to build someone for, to get their money. Yeah. I mean, she's working hard at being lazy. Exactly. Right. And then she's going to be upset. It did it. I did all this work. No, he didn't. <laughs> right. Like I always tell, I actually, I don't carry business cards. I don't believe in business cards because I don't believe, I don't believe in handing something out and going on my hands and knees at home and praying at night. I hope they call me. I hope they call me. Like, even if I had business cards, for anybody who does love business cards, for whatever reason, if you love business cards, it makes you feel, it just feels good. It's got the name on there, whatever. Um, I would much rather, if you had somebody, to be like, oh, even if you have me in your back pocket, I'm so sorry. So many people asked for my card today. I, I don't have one. Um, what's your cell phone number? I'll text you. Or what's your social media? How hard is it, right? to get an owner's cell phone number. And number two, how hard is it to actually find the owner on social media of that business? It's really easy to find the businesses, but sometimes you have to do some digging to find the person who actually owns that business because you may be messaging that business. Like if you message our companies, you're not talking to me. You're talking to all of our admins. Like it's some people, they, they act like it's me, but it's not me, yeah. right? So you're not even like, that message is probably never gonna see the light of day. So I would much rather you connect with someone on that. And if you actually are even going to do business cards, I would much rather that turn into like a pamphlet with a QR code or actually like a pamphlet that here's my name's my name's Dave. Here's what I got in this business. Here's what I'm about. Here's blah, 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 blah. And giving them something, some kind of call to action that is going to resonate with them or benefit them because what she did is just a waste of paper. Oh, yeah. It's just an absolute waste of paper. And I think, you know, more people need to, really think about the statement of your podcast, the walk in the wealth. Like she, she thought, okay, there's a thousand, a hundred people in that room. What if I got half? Well, that's 50. You're not getting any of them. Like, what if you just took more time with five extra people? You, you ask the right probing questions in the beginning. That's also a big thing that 99% people do all this hard work where they go uh, online, offline, send a million different messages, do all this work but they let one, two, three, or five sentences ruin the whole entire deal. And what I mean by that is being afraid to ask the hard questions where you may get an answer back that could ruin the potential sale or deal. But you need to ask somebody, are you interested in doing this? If I could do, if you could leverage this, would you be interested in? If they say no, then you can find those four or five people in that room who are interested, then spend more time with them once they're qualified and really bud that relationship. But you need to fill up your pipeline as well because I have deals every single day with my wife that we close that are from a year or two ago. 
Yeah. And so what would you say to anyone that's interested in walking to into this, you know, this card payment processing business? You know, well, how could they get started with you? Where could they find you at? Um, you know, how do they go about doing that? Um, go to residualpayments.com, residualpayments.com. It's a dollar to learn. It's a dollar to learn and do it on your own. It's a dollar for a business owner to come in and take control back of their own processing. So if you're a business owner, it's the smartest thing you're ever going to do. There's no upsells. You can come in and instantly put money back in your business. Now, if you want to leverage our team for a whole entire year doing everything, we'll get into it later on. And you want to have the done with you service where we do everything for you for a year, not a dollar, 10 grand. And see, I don't care about saying that because I don't need people wasting my time because I know my time is valuable. I'm, I'm not going to unlock all my relationships. My team's going to do everything for a year for you. Honestly, 10 grand for a year, not that much. like really cheap. It's really, really, really how much money you can make in credit card processing. So we're only looking for people who are looking for that. But if you want to come in for a dollar and take this knowledge and go do it on your own, nobody helped us. You're going to have to figure it out yourself. I'll teach you everything, but you're going to have to do it all yourself. Like Patricia and myself did. It's going to take you longer, 1,000%. But I believe in knowledge should almost be free. And that's where I make our program a dollar, mm. right? Because I'm as much as they're qualifying us, I'm qualifying them. So then they can't bitch at me when I'm like, I only charge you a dollar. I gave you everything. I also do a 90 minute live training for a dollar. Call with them. So like, it's kind of ridiculous we give because I'm looking for the right people. And then if you're like, I want people to pay a dollar, switch over their own business, save money, take this information so they can make a qualified decision after learning everything. If they're going to go with this on their own, or if they want to come and join forces. With us. You can find us on meet the Carlins on Instagram, meet the Carlins, M E E T the Carlins on Instagram or TikTok, uh, or resi- you know, go to residualpayments.com. The link to join is in our bio at Meet the Carlins, um, and we own a bunch of different other companies that you can utilize. But for right now, we'll just talk about you earning residual income back in your business or back in your pocket, reselling this. Um, give it a shot. Check it out. It's only a dollar. You have nothing to lose. I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Okay. And then do you have any like thing up and coming, like any books, potentially any like big speaking events or anything like that? that you guys are hosting or got going on? Yep. So we have another live event coming up uh, in February. Our last event, we had Rick Ross there, Raekwon from Wu-Tang, Bethany Hamilton, Iron Cowboy, ton of big CEO speakers there. We have another event coming uh, February 17th to 19th in Scottsdale, in Scottsdale, Arizona, at one of our clubs we own. Uh, it's a three-day event, all about business. We're going to have a bunch of new celebrities there as well, but tons of CEO speakers there. Um it's at one of our clubs. Where we only hold a max of 600 people. We've already sold uh, almost uh, more than half the tickets already. They just went on sale the other day. But you have to be a member of residual payments to come to that. So this is private events. We have a bunch of other events that we're going to be speaking at. Um, but we're the exact opposite of the rest of the space. I just believe in hard work and having the right people behind you. So you'll, you'll, you'll be seeing us more and more and more um, online, but for right now, just come to residual payments. You'll, you'll get all the information there for our events coming up. and for the program. All righty. And let's get with the final four questions. Uh, first one is what is the most impactful lesson you learned in life? Um, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> um, to the most biggest thing I've ever, the most thing I've learned from my, probably for myself is to be, comfortable with yourself, right? So many people are so uncomfortable online um, and they can never get past that barrier because they're always worried about what someone else is going to think. So when you're playing out scenarios of putting out content online or you're playing out scenarios about what a person, how they're going to say no to you or how it can't work, you need to release all that subcontext of what people have been telling you your whole life about you or what you've thought about yourself. You need to fix this so that mentally You can release whatever bad things you think about yourself or whatever you portray that you think people see about you because nine times out of 10, what you think people are going to care, one, they don't care because, again, it's like a flick of the switch, your your old news. Or number two, you're stopping yourself from really achieving success because it's you. It's not them. It's what you actually think they think, but they don't think that, but you're your worst enemy. Okay. And what is the most admirable admirable trait a person can have? Not to screw somebody over. <laughs> You're actually on it in business. That's hard to find. When there's money, especially in credit card processing, there's a lot of money on the plate, right? 
And I, we do it for our clients every single day. I'm like, damn, this guy was getting overcharged. I should just lower it a little bit. Tons of money for me. Every single time I don't do that and I, I do right by them, they stick with us forever. Think of think of a longer term play when it comes to business. Longer term play when it comes to business. Stop trying to hit those home runs and screwing people over. Loyalty is earned by people. You don't know who's going to be loyal, but you know you just need to just do right by everybody. And karma's a bitch. You know what I mean? So if people screw you, it is what it is. Don't sit in the corner and cry about it. Move on with your life. Yeah. Okay. If you wanted to change someone's life with one book, I know you just got into reading books pretty recently. <laughs> Which one would you I, recommend? <laughs> I wish it was mine. It could be. I love this book. I've only read like five pages. Very good. Yeah, but actually, no, I think I read like 10. Just the fuck being humble. That's an amazing title. It's it's really, go get it, guys. Um, is there an affiliate link somewhere? For <laughs> yeah, get you some sales right now. Um, that's another thing too, like, you never know. That could be weird. Like, what if for some reason the girl who, who wrote the book heard it and is like, oh, should have heard about your business. Thanks for promoting it. Loved. It. You never know. Like, putting yourselves in situations and always kind of giving back. Just because you give back to someone right away doesn't mean, whereas my, you no, know, it may, you may get that in return two or three years from now, right? So, mm. you know, walk to wealth, take your time, um, get on more podcasts than you can actually pay for paid marketing. I truly believe podcasts are the wave of the future in terms of scalability because of how long they live on and how much you can repurpose them to your exact point. Um, but yeah, you know, just uh, whatever you think the time is going to take for you to be successful, triple it. Okay, and then I you get lucky. I hope you guys get lucky, but some, you know, it is what it is. You can't scale a business on luck and hope. <laughs> got to get the, no. got to get it out the mud. Uh, Go play the lottery if you like gambling. Yeah. And what is the legacy that you're trying to leave behind in a sentence or two? Um, I guess it's just for my family because nobody in the world is going to care about me, right? All <laughs> people like I remember me and my family, and um. Like I told my family, it was nice the other day. We just gave everyone in the family a, a disbursement. They did not like it, but everyone got a nice nice chunk of cash from them as, as a start one. And I told everybody, I said, the day I retire, um, and I believe in giving a little bit here. I don't try to just spoil everybody. I'm talking about aunts, uncles, cousins, like everybody. When I'm done, everybody else is going to be rich as well. They're going to be done. They're, going to have, they're not going to have a mortgage. Everyone's going to have money. Everyone's going to have money to do what they want. Um, and I believe in help. Like I just signed up for the big brother or big sister book yesterday so i believe in helping a lot of people i don't show that online because i don't it's kind of like weird if you give someone money and like check out me giving someone like yeah it's kind of like i hate, I don't, it. I hate it and i hate seeing those things yeah get, get from the you heart. know what they're really doing and they're not being honest about what they're really doing I but i truly believe that you know just take care of your family take care of your friends that's the love that's the thing i really love like a friend or family needs something it's nothing to write a check and it's not about you know like oh it's it's about just making people's lives easier. You know what I'm saying? It's life is short. So that's the legacy is I want to be able to decade, you know, generations from now, decades, generations from now, the money that we made to take care of those. All right. Well, Dave, it was amazing having you on. We had a definitely a, a great conversation about business, credit cards. And I know anyone that is interested is definitely going to swing on over to your, your page on whether that's in your Instagram account or in your residual income websites. And um, I know that they're definitely going to find this valuable because, most people like to hear, hear about, you know, low barriers to entry. So it's like you have no excuse not to see what it's about and check it out at all. Yep. Well, it was a pleasure having you on and I look forward to staying in touch. Right. Cool. Thank you for having me. On. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. Again, I am your host, John Mendez. You can find me at John Mendez underscore realtor and at walk to wealth on Instagram. Please make sure to subscribe and leave a review if you're loving the podcast so far. New episodes are released every Sunday. Look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Take care.